Welcome everybody. Daniel Joram with Time Zero here, and today we're going to take a look at our premium oceanographic service as well as the free weather service available in Time Zero Professional version 4.1. So the first thing that we're going to need to do after we create our account is to download a weather file, and to do that we're going to use the update workspace, and we're going to select the area that we're interested in with the update area button here on the toolbar. Now I'm going to download a little bit bigger of a swath of the ocean for this demonstration. A little bit more than I typically would if I was on board. And you'll see that uh, we've got two different sections here. The top section is going to be our weather information. So this is wind, air temperature, cloud cover and precipitation, wave information. And then there's a slider at the top that's going to allow us to change what our forecast duration is. Next, we have our oceanographic data, and this is where we're going to get into our premium service. So this is the sea surface temperature and high resolution, as well as sea surface height or altimetry, chlorophyll, sea water temperature. Sea water temperature is going to be temperature at various depths throughout the water column, as well as multi-layer currents. And so to make sure that we get the right information we're going to select the depth layer that we're interested in in this case I'm going to use the 0 to 100 meter and then we also want to make sure we have thermocline the other information we can get current shear salinity uh, sea ice for our uh, fishermen that are up north or down south uh, dissolved oxygen primary production phytoplankton and also pH Lastly, you'll see that we have the option to change the resolution and depending on the area that we are uh, looking at, we can change the um, resolution which will uh, change the file size. We also have the ability to change the time interval, so how many forecasts, uh, snapshots essentially per day. And you'll see what information will be changed when you make that adjustment. Once we're satisfied with what we're doing, we're going to hit download. Once our download is completed, then we're going to go ahead and take a look at the planning workspace uh, to start with. On the planning workspace, we're going to use the weather icon on the ribbon to display weather. And now we'll be able to take a look at our basic information. So this is wind speed and direction. Uh, wind speed and color with our particle animation for uh, direction. We can also change that to wave set and height, barometric pressure, uh, cloud cover and precipitation, ocean currents. And we can also do a custom presentation for, uh, in this example, wind speed and barometric pressure. To display this I can animate the weather file and so we can see what that change is going forward. We can also grab the time bar anywhere and scroll forward to a specific time. Then we also have the ability to get a snapshot using our mediogram tool and that will give us a specific location on the chart. You can change that as this is a dynamic uh, snapshot. Alright, so now let's take a look at our premium service and to do that we're going to use a dedicated workspace which is the Ocean O workspace. And for those of you that have used our fishing workspace you'll see a lot of similarities in our user interface here. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to take a look at the altimetry which is probably the most important factor uh, that we're going to use. So to start off with we'll use color shading and we'll select sea surface height. So the concept is that the ocean isn't flat. We have areas of warmer, less dense water that are going to rise, and we have areas of cooler, denser water that are going to sink. And the uh, denser water are going to be more nutrient rich, and so that's where a lot of our feeder fish are going to be, and that's where we'll find our um, pelagic species that we're targeting or bigger predators will be feeding uh, in those areas. And what they're going to do is they're going to go to the cooler water to feed and then go back to the warmer water to rest. And so we're going to see them actually hanging out on that frontal zone in between the warmer water and the cooler water. And so you can see that a little bit here where we have the areas of cooler water 
and then we have areas of warmer water here. To make it easier to see, we can add in our ISO lines. So this is going to be sort of a, a contour line graph of the same information. And so now we'll get altimetry as well as you can see those areas where the contour lines are close together that um, they are you know, essentially a frontal zone. And that's where our, our fish are going to be. Um, to make it easier still, we have actually made just a front option for that. So now we can display and I'll take off the color so we can see it's a little bit easier just the frontal zones that are um, present there. And so we can make an adjustment to that if we want. And now what I like to do is I actually like to overlay our current information on top of that frontal zone. So what we're going to do is we'll add another layer here and uh, we can do this either as uh, particles or arrows. Maybe I'll start with the particles just to give you a sense of what our currents are going to do. Um, but to make it a little bit easier to see, uh, what we're going to do is we'll change that uh, particle animation over and we're going to make this a arrow. With that, you can also change the density, color, and size. And so now, We've got a good indication. We've got a, a good area of current here that's on a front in between that warmer water and that cooler water. And again, these are going to be geostrophic currents. Um, and so we'll find is that the, the feeder fish are going to be swimming with the currents and our uh, pelagic species will be able to swim against them. All right. So now that we have a good representation of our uh, sea surface height, we can also add in sea water temperature. So we're going to hide our sea surface height here in color. And maybe we'll turn off the ISO lines just so we can have a really easy thing to see. And we're going to go to color shading and we're going to go with sea water temperature. Select that. And again, this we can display at various depths in the water column because this is temperature at depth. So we'll go to 40 meters for this. And we're going to switch over to a, a manual mode. You'll see that that's a sort of an auto snapshot of everything. So if we go to manual and we can make adjustments to our temperature range that we're interested in. You need to do that with a slider. You can double click and enter a value. And you'll see that I have this in uh, meters and in Celsius. But uh, through the adjustment in the software, you can change that to Fahrenheit feet or fathoms, depending on uh, what suits you. So now we have a, a couple of frontal zones that match the sea water temperature that we're interested in. So that would be a good indication of an area of interest. And same thing with uh, that little spot there. The other thing that we can show you is sort of a snapshot of that water column, similar to our mediogram. So we'll show this little plot window here. And that's going to bring up water temperature at depth, as well as current at depth and current direction. And as I take this, I can see that in a couple of different spots. And that thermal climb is going to be really important if you're a pelagic saner, because that thermal climb barrier is going to act as that sort of uh, third wall. Uh, so fish aren't going to be able to go below that area. And so you want to make sure that if you have a sane out, that your net's below that depth. As you saw when I downloaded that file, there's lots of different ways to um, display the data, and there's lots of different data that we can display. Uh, it's really a powerful tool. It's very easy to customize to your liking. Uh, once you have that set up, you can record this sort of presentation as a new preset, and so you can always refer back to it. Thanks very much for taking the time to watch this video. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out. We'd be more than happy to dive deeper into our new premium oceanographic service.